Welcome to the latest installment in our effort to keep the Purdue family informed during the coronavirus episode. Although it's been only six weeks since the first of these messages, we now know dramatically more than we did at the time that Purdue, along with the rest of America, shut down normal operations. One thing we've learned is that, though very imperfect, real learning can still occur at a distance, and we now know much more about how to do that. A huge thanks is owed to both our faculty and our students for cooperating to make the best of a lousy situation. We've also found out that even in the face of the viral uncertainty, an extraordinary number of talented young people want to attend Purdue this fall. Deposits from freshman applicants are well ahead of last year's record and we still have a month to go. They know, as we do, that a full collegiate education requires the personal encounters with great teachers and with fellow students that only a campus experience provides. Meanwhile, the world of science has learned a ton about the virus itself. For instance, the understanding that in outdoor settings like this one, the virus is extremely unlikely to spread. The discovery that virtually all those at mortal risk have one or more comorbidities and which of those are the most dangerous. The effectiveness of various kinds of protective tools and social distance practices and of special relevance to a place like Purdue, the consistent finding everywhere that the young people who make up over 80 percent of our campus population are at near zero lethal risk. At Purdue, we believe in science and in following the facts. Where these and other facts have led us, guided by a faculty-led task force, is to an intention to open school but only after making a host of changes to provide maximum practical protection for the potentially vulnerable among us, older faculty and staff, and those, including some students, with risk factors like hypertension or compromised immune systems. We've received and begun investigating some 150 separate ideas, many of them to create distance and physical separation between students and adults, faculty, academic advisors, administrative staff, and so on. We'll use time, space, and technology in new ways to de-densify classes and offices and campus gatherings. We'll be self-reliant in testing, tracing, and quarantining those positive for the virus. We'll probably require facial protection, flu vaccinations, self-quarantine of anyone with symptoms, and other expectations of personal responsibility by every member of the community. We're prepared to spend a lot of money to accomplish these and many other improvements. Any change we make will be reviewed and approved by the university's ultimate authority, the Board of Trustees. One likely early decision will be to alter this fall's calendar to remove breaks and therefore the extent of coming and going from campus. As I'm recording this message, all over the country, college faculty and staff are experiencing pay cuts, furloughs, and permanent layoffs by the thousands. It appears, sadly, that many schools may close altogether. An institution like ours exists only because of its students, so fewer students axiomatically means fewer people to teach and serve them. We hope never to be forced to any of those decisions. If we all do our part in building a safe and prepared campus environment, one that young people can come to with confidence, we won't be. To the more than 8,000 applicants who have chosen Purdue, thank you. We can't wait to have you with us. To their upper class fellow students, thanks for pitching in to get us through this semester. We'll need your leadership this fall to help protect each other and those who teach you. To my coworkers here on campus, your safety is at the heart of our actions and the investments with which we'll back them up. As we protect your health, we will protect your jobs by welcoming back the great young people for whom this university exists. Every one of us will have to lend a hand, some in protecting themselves, all of us in protecting each other. When you think about it, what a great cause to be a part of. We'll be back soon with more specifics as the board approves them. Thanks for listening. Boiler up.